back my seventh grade advanced class. We're going to be going over lesson 1-7's homework. Um, let's begin. I'm going to do the e or odd one since it starts with number seven. It says, complete each table to find the value of non-zero number of a non-zero number raised to the power of zero. So let's check this out. Uh, first of all, we know that if we took <clears throat> 4 to the 4th power, it would give us 254. Um, we know this because if we go to our calculator here, and we put in 4, and then we put in this symbol here, which is putting a power to the, another power, and put it to the 4th power, we get 256. Now we have 4 to the 3rd power. Now another way we could do it, just remember that 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So I can just write in 64 here. <clears throat> and then we have 4 to the second power, which is 4 times 4. That's going to be 16. And then we have 4 to the first power. Uh, and anything to the first power is itself 4. So what happens when we have 4 to the zero power? Do we get zero? Remember, this is not 4 times zero. Uh, anything to the zero power is 1. Okay. It's one. Anything to the zero power is one. All right. <clears throat> I'll let you work out number eight here. And it's time for me to go to number nine. Given that negative 3.2 to the zero power, okay, uh, simplify the given expression. Well, if I said that anything to the zero power is one, I would say that simplest form of this expression is one. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, B, it says write two expressions equivalent to the given expression. Okay, explain why the three expressions are equivalent. So now they want me to write two equivalent expressions, right? Uh, two equivalent expressions equivalent, two expressions, excuse me, equivalent to the given expressions there, right? So, uh, and then write the three expressions or explain why they are equivalent. Well, since we know that any number raised to the zero power is one, we could say uh, we could say five to the zero power, uh, or we could even go with uh, what negative eight to the zero power. Right? Now, both of these are one because anything to the zero power is one. All right. I explain why the three expressions are equivalent. Well, I think I just said it. <clears throat> Any number raised to the zero power is one. All right, and I'm going to shrink these letters a little bit because I didn't know it was writing that huge. But we just uh, do this and this. Okay, I guess we're going to have to do it the hard way. There we go. <clears throat> so now we have our answer for that one. Uh, 10 is yours to do. I'll do number 11. Compare the values using, uh, let's see, greater than, less than, or equal. All right. So is 3 to the negative 2 power greater than, less than, or equal to 1? Well, we know 3 to the negative 2 power, as we learned in our last lesson, <clears throat> is going to be 1 over 3 to the second power. And this is really equivalent to 3 times 3, so that would be 1 to the ninth power. Or excuse me, 1 over 9. 1 over 9. And now we're trying to see, is 1 over 9 uh, greater than, less than, or equal to 1? Well, of course, 1 ninth of something is less than 1. So this is going to be less than 1. Okay? And uh, now it's time to go to number 13. You'll do number 14. Write, uh, rewrite each expression using a positive exponent. Okay? That means this has to be positive and not negative. Remember, whenever we have a negative number here, okay, <clears throat> we're saying that it's going to go on the bottom of our fraction. Okay? So this would be 1 over 9 to the 4th power. And we'll see that now we turn it positive. This negative means it goes in the denominator area. Okay. 
Let's cruise on down here to number 15. It says given y, or 9 uh, times y to the 0 powers, uh, simplify the expression if y is 3. So they're saying if this is 9 times 3 to the 0 power. Now remember Pendus says, uh, please excuse me, <coughs> my dear Aunt Sally, <clears throat> I have to do parentheses and exponents before multiplication. So before I can multiply 9 and 3, I have to use this exponent here. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is equivalent to 9 times 1. And that means uh, we're going to get 9. Okay. Um, let's see. Will the value of the given expression vary depending on y? So in other words, if y was a different number, would it matter? No, because let's just say that we said that it, uh, y was 7. And this would be 9 to the 7 to the 0 power. And this would still be 7 to the 0 power, which would be 1. And we'd still have 9 times 1, which would equal 9. So will the value of the given expression uh, vary? No. And uh, when it asks why, I would have to type uh, <clears throat> because any number, um, see, raised to the zero power is one. All right. So move on from here. Uh, I got number 17 to do. Evaluate each pair of expressions. I'm going to evaluate these. I got negative 3 to the negative 8th power. Wow. Okay, so remember what this really is. Uh, because this is a negative 8, right, we're going to be taking this and turning it into uh, or evaluating each of these pairs. Excuse me. <clears throat> so what is this first one going to be? Um, well, the first one is taking negative 3. And let's see, uh, we're putting it to the 8th power, negative 3, to the 8th power. Remember, the 8th is going to go on the bottom here. This is not 38. This is, I'm going to try to make it a little bit better here. This is really negative 3 to the 8th. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, now I have to say, what is negative 3 uh, times itself 8 times? I'm going to use my calculator for this. I don't want to waste a lot of time. Uh, so if I was to take, uh, let's see, negative 3, this would be, uh, let's see, with my plus or minus, negative 3 negative, excuse me, negative 3. <clears throat> and then we are raising this negative 3. And I think I forgot to put in parentheses. Excuse me. Let me try this again. Uh, oh, no, it was in parentheses. I take that back. Parentheses. Oh, goodness. Parentheses. Negative 3. And we're going to raise this to the 8th power. 8th or negative 8? Oh, the negative. Well, negative 8 meant that it went to the bottom. And that's going to equal, <clears throat> let's see, uh, so this is going to equal 1 over, six five six one six five six one six thousand five hundred and sixty one. 6561, okay? Now let's evaluate the second one. The second one says negative 3 to the negative 8th power. And please don't confuse these as the same. This is saying both the negative and 3. Negative 3 itself is raised to the negative 8th power. This is saying 3 is multiplied to uh, the negative 8th power, and it's a negative over here. So <clears throat> this is going to be equal to, let's see, um, this one over here is going to be equal to 1 over, actually negative 1 over 3 to the 8th power. And notice how this makes it a little different. I made that 
to make it a little small again. Now this time when I have 3 to the 8th power, I'm still going to get 6,561. <clears throat> Excuse me. But my negative sign's in front of this answer. Okay? So in this second part, uh, this is going to be negative 1 over 6, 5, 6, 1. All right, so in the first one, the negative uh, 3, that was a, 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 a <clears throat> integer, right? A negative number. And because it's multiplied to itself by an even number of times, it's going to become positive. But over here, the negative sign stays in front of the whole thing. So even though my answer was going to be positive, the negative symbol makes the whole answer negative. All right, let's go ahead and work uh, B now, B. And B says negative 3 to the negative 9 power. Now, this is going to be different because we have an odd number here. <clears throat> this first one is going to be 1 over uh, negative 3 to the ninth power. Okay. That's going to be equal to, well, let's get that calculator out again. <clears throat> We'll put in parentheses, negative 3. Didn't do the parentheses. Let me clear that. Parentheses. Oh, yes, it did. Try this again. Parentheses, negative 3. And we're raising it to the negative 9 power. Okay, so 9, negative 9 power. And notice... Uh, Wow, we got a big old number here, don't we? <clears throat> Which uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to go ahead and try this again. Because I know we should get a whole number since we're multiplying whole numbers together. So this is going to be negative 3. Oh, and I forgot. It's not the negative 9 power. It's to the ninth power because we have 9 on the bottom here. And that's probably why we got that funny answer. I try to put the negative 9 power, but remember, we turn it into a fraction, so it's a positive 9 now. So let's try that now. 3 to the negative, negative 3, we're closing our parentheses, and then we're raising this to the ninth power. And that's going to be, look at that, uh, negative 19, 683. Okay, so this is going to be 1 over, and we got a negative over here. And our answer was uh, 19683. 19,683. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we do it to negative 3 to the negative 9 power. Now this one is actually going to be, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I had to clear my nose a little bit there. This one is actually going to be 1 over. Let's see, uh, this one's going to be a negative in front, right? Because the 3 is down here to the ninth power. And now I know this one's going to be equal to 1 over 19,683. And because there was a negative in front here, I put the negative here. This time, both of our answers were negative 1 over 1963. You see that? I'm going to highlight this here so you can see what the answers were. Okay. This one ended up being the same as this one for, for two different reasons. Okay. On this one, it was negative because uh, we had a odd uh, a negative number multiplied an odd number of times so that made it uh, negative on this one it was simply negative because we had to put the negative in front when we multiply this positive number to the ninth power all right <clears throat> let's see uh, number 19 i believe is mine now simplify the expression assume that x is non-zero 
okay? Uh, they're saying that this is a non-zero number, okay? Your answer should have only positive exponents, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and work this out. We're assuming that x is non-zero, and your answer should only have positive exponents. And when we do this, remember, we're taking the uh, <clears throat> all the positive numbers, putting it as my numerator, so this is going to be x over 6, and taking all my negative exponents and putting them in the denominator section, so this is x to the 10. We remember that uh, we always shift the numbers to the greater numbers, so 10 is bigger than 6, so we're going to move this down here, but we have to turn it to the opposite number. So this is going to be equal to, uh, well, let's just pretend we got uh, x times x times x times x times x times x. And we see that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's being multiplied to each other, right? <clears throat> now over here we got 10 of them, so we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now remember the rule, <clears throat> any number over itself, you can do, divide it away because it equals 1. So that means this one will be crossed out. This one would be crossed out. This would be crossed out. This one would be crossed out. This is all these are equaling the same number over themselves, which are equaling one. So I got one times one, right? All these are one now. One times itself, six times is going to be still equal to one. Does everyone understand why we get one on top now? And now we have x times itself four times left on the bottom, because these are all one, and one multiplied to itself is itself, right? So x times itself four times would be x to the fourth power. The other way you could have done it is to simply say that this is also equal to, uh, let's see, x six minus six. We're getting rid of this six, right? That means whatever I subtract from the top, I subtract from the bottom. So this x to the tenth power over here is now x to the tenth minus six, all right? which again is equal to, well, any number to the zero power, right? X to the zero power over X to the fourth power. And we said any number to the zero power is one. So once again, we get one over X to the fourth, which is exactly what we had when we did it using the X's over here, right? Either way, I'm going to get the same answer. <clears throat> All right, uh, well, number 20 is yours, so I'm done with homework for tonight, which means you got to get started and finishing up on yours. I will see you in class where we will grade this, and uh, until next time, I'm going to leave you with a code word. Here's our code word for today. The code word today is going to be, <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to go with, uh, ah, here we go. I went to this place to get... Uh, checked on and it is center for sight so put on your paper center and sight center sight and that is your code word you will earn a treat from me for watching the video all right guys now i'm going to erase it just in case anybody's fast forwarding it only the people that watch the video will catch it all right, and I wish you all good night, and I'll see you in class.